Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, are you home for lunch today? Say, that reminds me, Mother, I better be on my way. Going out for lunch? I'm going over to the theater to take Claudia out for a bite. I don't want that daughter of yours starving herself. She won't. This isn't much of a vacation for you, is it, David? Mm, on the contrary. I'm practically a bachelor. What more of a vacation could a husband ask? A good deal more. Your kind of husband, at least. Yeah. Now I know where Claudia gets it, Mother. David, stop talking in riddles. Uh, she's just like you. Always worrying about the other guy. Once and for all, I'm having a delightful vacation. Peace and quiet. Have it your own way. This afternoon, I'm going to spend with Fritz. Might even get around to buying a cow. I have pails, buckets, and the butter churn already. <laughs> Good. I wonder how it's going at the theater. Well, I'm shortly to find out. I hope it's going well. I hope Claudia's really able to do the part and make a success of it. Why shouldn't she? You stop worrying. <laughs> worrying about me, worrying about Claudia. Why don't you worry about yourself for a change? Because I'm not the worrying kind. Now, if you really want to know how the rehearsal is going, I'll tell you. Right Did now. Did a little birdie whisper it in your ear? Yeah, Claudia and I don't need little birdies. We're very modern. We prefer mental telepathy. Let me eavesdrop on your telepathy. Mm, let me see now. Everything is going beautifully, beautifully. Claudia and Victoria Manners are rehearsing their big scene right this minute, and Claudia is acting circles around Miss Manners. Does Miss Manners like it? Oh, she loves it. <laughs> There's nothing a leading lady loves more than playing with amateurs. But with Claudia, Victoria can act to the hilt. So she loves it. I hope you're right. And let me add, Jim Varney is absolutely delighted at the way things are going. And he's saying to himself, Varney, old man, you're a smart one. You were positively inspired when you decided to cast Claudia Norton in that part. Why, look at her. The kid's talented. The kid's wonderful. You are having delusions of grandeur. Oh, come on now, Mother. A little faith, a little confidence in your offspring. Why, I'm so sure everything's going smoothly that I'm not the least bit concerned. More power to you. Well, after all, doesn't Claudia know her part by heart? She did last night. So she does this morning. No, sir? That wife of mine can stand up to anybody. The eyes of a lover are strangely distorted. But not the eyes of a husband. Now get along with you. You don't have to stand around here holding my hand. <laughs> All right, I'm on my way. David, see that she eats a de decent lunch. Still worrying. You are a nag. I just don't want you to miss Claudia too much. You eat a decent lunch yourself. I've given you my word that everything's going smoothly at the theater, and at this very moment, Varney is applauding Claudia's big scene. Now look, Claudia, Victoria, you're not here for the fun of it. You're supposed to be working. You're supposed to be a couple of actresses. You're getting paid for this, so now let's try this scene over again and try to do it right. From the beginning, Mr. Varney? Yes, Claudia, from the beginning. <clears throat> I, I'm ready, Miss Manners. I know this is all very new to you, my dear, but the first thing to learn is not to cross in front of another actress when she's talking. Do you understand? But I thought Mr. Varney told All right, me... let's get going. I don't have all day to spend with you two. This isn't very easy for me, Jim. This is no criticism of Claudia, but it takes a little while to train somebody new in the theater. I'm sorry if I, I seem... That's all right, my dear. I understand. All right, all right. Let's go. All right, dear. Stephanie, could I talk to you a minute? Louder. People are going to pay 3.30 to see you, and they want to hear you, too. Stephanie, could I talk to you a moment, please? Yes, and why not? I've been wanting to talk to you for days. Look, for the last time, you two are both in love with the same man. I'll look a little bit less friendly. A little more like two hens fighting over a rooster. Give it more oomph. All right, try it again. Jim... Don't you think it'd be a good idea if I stood up when Claudia comes All in? All right, stand up. Do anything you want, but act. Let's go. Stephanie, could I talk to you a moment, please? Yes, and why not? Oh, Jim, it's much better when I'm standing up. And, Claudia, would you please stand still during my lines? You must walk, walk on your own, love. Oh, two women. No playwright should ever write a play with a scene for two women in it. All right, Claudia, try it again. Stephanie, could I talk to you a moment, please? Yes, and why not? I, I mean, I, I've been wanting to, I, I've been wanting to talk to you for days. I thought you knew your part. 
I, I knew it when I came, Mr. Varney, but we've done it so many times, I'm forgetting it. There's no need to get upset. We have all day for you. Would you mind if we started it again from the beginning? Of course not, darling. Jim understands. And I understand. I, I don't know what's gotten into me. I. All right, I'm ready. And this time I'm going to do it right. Stephanie, could I talk to you a moment? Yes, and why not? I've been wanting to talk to you for days. Louder, please. I suppose you know <clears throat> I'm in love with Guy. Oh, you're so young, my dear. Just because a man kisses you, just because you happen to be in love with a man, that doesn't mean that he... Claudia, will you please stand still during my speeches? But I haven't moved. You're two steps closer to me than when we started. I didn't realize I was moving. You'll just have to learn how to control yourself. I'm trying, I'm trying very hard. Well, what are we stopping for now? I'm doing my best, Jim, but she's upstaging me. I am? Oh, uh, 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 let's find a break for lunch. I'll send out for some sandwiches. I'm awfully sorry, but... That's all right, my dear. I thought I knew this scene perfectly. Well, I'm just going out in the court a second. I'm expecting David. Oh, there he is. I'll be back in a minute. Listen, Victoria, you've got to stop riding that kid. Are you in love with her or something? Shut up. You want everybody to hear you? You must be in love with her. I don't know what else she's doing here. She's acting her part. And acted it darn well, too, until you started getting jealous. Hmm, can you blame me? Frankly, no. She's so bloody sweet, she kills me. And she'll kill the audience, too, so just leave her alone. This is my play, Jim, and I intend to keep it that way, no matter what. Here she comes. Let's get out of here and have a bite to eat. And, Victoria, for once, give someone a break. Take your nails out of her heart. Oh, good. They're they're going. We can be alone. David, kiss me. Kiss me quick. Hello, darling. Hold me tight, David. Oh, um... How's the rehearsal going? It's going beautifully, just beautifully. It's going just the way Victoria Manners wants it to go. Mm -hmm. Which is not so beautiful. Oh, it's probably my fault. I'm doing everything wrong. I walk when I shouldn't. I forget my lines. I know them. I know I know them. I'm terrible. Are you as terrible as all that? I am. I'm worse, maybe. I should have stayed at home with the baby instead of thinking I could be an actress all of a sudden. Well, being home with a baby is more all of a sudden, isn't it? Well, it comes more naturally to me. Well, come on. We'll have some lunch. I, I don't want any, darling. Well, you have to eat. Mama said so. Well, some sandwiches are being sent in, but I, I, I don't feel like eating. David, at home last night, I was so sure I could do this scene right, and I thought I was doing it all right, but I don't know. Today, it, it, it just fell apart. Victoria tells me one thing and Barney tells me another, and I I can't remember everything they're telling me. Oh, David, I wish I could go home with you. What, um, what would you do at home? I wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I suppose you'd like that better. I'd love it. Well, well, you certainly have changed. For the sensible. Maybe you're right. I don't know what made me think I should take this part. Oh, I wish I hadn't. Spoiling everything. I can't even be with you on your vacation. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe you should have stayed at home with the baby. Maybe you aren't cut out to be an actress. Not everybody is, you know. It's a tough business, a Mm. very tough business. I guess it's like everything else. Not all beer and Skittles. I never particularly liked beer and Skittles before. What are Skittles? Well, they're... Well, anyway, you can develop a taste for them. Now, you can get out of the play before it's too late, you know. All you have to do is talk to Varney. What would I say? Well, just say you don't think you can do the part. But I know I can do it. I do the scenes perfectly with you. It's just that Victoria manner. Then tell Varney you're unhappy, not enjoying yourself. As long as you're not enjoying yourself, you don't see any point to doing it. It's not the money, so... David, a person can't go through life just just doing the things a person enjoys. Besides, I love the theater. I love the theater. It's just that I hate Victoria Manners, and she hates me. Well, that's reason enough to quit. Even for me? You just told me you're terrible in your part. I am. And I I take off my hat to you, because... Because what? Because you're honest, and darn few women are honest. Oh, I knew that a long time ago. I found it out in the butcher shop. What's that got to do with taking off your hat to me? 
got to do because you realize that you haven't anything on the ball and you have the courage to admit it. A lot of women wouldn't have the sense to recognize it and duck. Are you seriously suggesting that I turn in my part and, and, and let Victoria Manners crow over me like a rooster in a barnyard of hens? Well, it might be the easiest way to save your face. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. You've given me a wonderful idea. You're welcome. I'm going to make Victoria Manor's face drop like a poached egg, that's what. You mean a dropped egg. And if you think I'm a quitter, you married the wrong person. Really? And if you think for a moment I quit, you're, you're crazy. You're crazier than this whole bunch of actors. Why, well, I, I, I wouldn't give Victoria Manor's the satisfaction of my quitting. Wouldn't you? And I'll tell you something else. You're a great, big, adorable, wonderful dope, and I love you. Now, what have I done now? Don't act so innocent, darling. You're not so much of an actor. I know you got me angry now just so I wouldn't throw in the towel. You wouldn't have anyway. Well, I guess maybe I wouldn't have. I was pretty close to it, though. (laughs) Oh, David, why do you bother coming to my rescue all the time? Because I promised Mama that rehearsals was going well, and you wouldn't want me to go back on my word to Mama, would you? the last thing I'd want. At least the next to the last thing. Mm, What's the last? The last thing I'd want is to be a weak-kneed, yellow-livered quitter you'd be ashamed of. (laughs) Well, I'm not worried. And, David, the first and last thing I do want is for you to love me. Because as long as you do, there's nothing can beat me. Nothing at all. Hmm. Hey, all of a sudden, now I'm hungry. Hungry? I wish I had time to go out to lunch with you. Well, you can, uh, you can eat Victoria Manners instead. <laughs> With your help, David. And it will be a pleasure. Good times don't always have to be planned in advance. Sometimes they just happen. You're in the mood for company, so you call up a few friends and say, come on over. You always feel free to do that if there are refreshments on hand. With Coca-Cola in your refrigerator, hospitality is easy. And since the 24-bottle case is still only a dollar, such hospitality is within everybody's entertainment budget. Mr. King, have you ever directed a play? Oh, sorry, Mr. Barney. Can't help you out on that. Oh, that's too bad. I feel as if I'm running a hen fight instead of a rehearsal. And Claudia is the losing hen. Cheer up. It'll get better now. You've been reading tea leaves? I've been eavesdropping. It's more reliable. Well, maybe I was wrong to give the kid the part. Victoria Manners is no easy lady to handle when she's threatened. Claudia can do it. She wants to be in this play awfully badly. She's been bitten by the theater bug a good long time. Well, it would have to be some bite to survive this. It is. You know, I guess most of us have been bitten by that same bug. Even the people you'd least expect. Like, uh, Jared Tucker, for instance. Does he want a part in my play? Who knows? At least, uh, who knows till tomorrow. See you then, Mr. Varney. Yep. Now back to work. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>